Hey guys, Matt here again for udesley.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the e-commerce filters inside of your Webflow e-commerce project to get a dynamically updating real-time filtering options on side of your store. We have a number of widgets inside of this pack. One of them is the e-commerce filters. Another is the wish list and the other one is the last viewed. So the wish list works like so. So if I've got this product here and I simply select on that wish list, scroll down, you can see it is appeared on this section here, which can be added onto your product page template. For the last viewed, if I go and view another product and scroll down, you can see that this section here has been updated with my last viewed product. The filtering options works exactly the same as the CMS one where you can filter between your categories, your different attributes for stuff like your sizes and colors and stuff like that. And it all automatically updates live in real time inside of the viewport. This is really great for having one single page of products and showing all of your catalog inside of one dynamically changing page. It's really handful for customers to find products really quickly without having to load a category page, without having to go into another page for your stuff like your pagination, because it all works using this e-commerce filters. I'm going to show you how you can build this e-commerce filter section from scratch using the Udesly resources. The best way to start from the e-commerce filters is to clone our sample project and copy everything across onto your product page and then copy the script and paste it onto your body of the page. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to create it from scratch and I can show you how you can apply the custom attributes using the documentation. So what you want to do is you want to open up your project. As you can see here, I've got my product page here and I've got an area down here that I want my, where I want my filter form to be. So what you want to do is you want to add a form block and you want to remove all of the labels except for one field and then inside there you can just name that search product and then what we need to do is we need to add a text block and then we also need to add a drop down And then we need to add a checkbox. Again, this can be custom if you want it to. And then we need to just simply add a div with two buttons inside of there, like so. One of them is for previous, and the other one is for next. So there you go, that is the filter all built up, ready. And if we go to our form lock, we need to apply a custom attribute onto there. So if you go to the documentation, go down to the sidebar section and we want to simply copy this attribute here and apply it to the form block there by the settings. So go to the custom attributes and paste that into the name and for the value it is simply form. Now we've got the filters area. So if you scroll down to the filter section, we've got filter name for the text block and filter properties for the other options there. So if we go to our project, go to the custom attributes on that text block and type in filter equals name. And for the checkbox field, it wants to be filter equals properties, like so. And then for the next and previous button, what we can do is go to the documentation again and see this section here for the pagination and simply copy these attributes for the previous and next button there. So simply go over to the attributes and paste in that option there. Copy the previous page value and paste that in there like so. So that button's now done. And we'll do the next button as well. So we'll copy this attribute here. Add that into the name and then copy the value of next page there and paste that in and then there you go we have got the form all built now what you need to do is apply the attributes onto your collection list wrapper so it interacts with the form 
So what you want what you want to do is you want to select on your collection list wrapper here, go over to the settings and go and apply this custom attribute. Simply paste in the Udesley hyphen e-commerce hyphen filters name and then paste in the list or the value. And then what we need to do is we need to give each one of these a value as well. So if we go to the documentation and we scroll down the page here, as you can see, we've got some stuff for image, link, name, description, price, compare price, and of course, categories as well. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use name, link, and the image there. So if you want to jump back to the project, I'm going to select on this link here, and I want to give it a custom attribute of card equals link then I've got a product picture and I want this to be a custom attribute of card equals image I've got my name here so I want this to be card equals name like so and then at last but not least I've got my price there and I want this to be card equals price and there you go, that is all done. So what we need to do now is paste in the script into our page. So simply go to the documentation and go all the way up to the top of the page. Copy the script there. Head back to your project and simply go to the page settings and paste it. And paste it in the body tag there, like so. Save that. Publish the page. And then when we view it, you'll notice that we've got all of the filtering options on our product page. There you go, the, all of our categories are pulled in and we can filter those down like we would do normally. And again you can search there like so and it live updates our, our products. So there you go, that is how you can create a custom filtering option that dynamically updates within the same page with inside of your Webflow project for your online e-commerce store. If you want an empty state on your filter widget, so when there is no item shown, you don't get a blank page. All you need to do is simply add a div block, like so, and just give it an attribute of Udesley e-commerce filters, and then empty hyphen state, like so. This empty state can have whatever you want in it. It can be designed to your heart's content and it works completely independent of the collection list wrapper empty message. So it doesn't use this empty message here. For all of the wish list elements, I do recommend you go ahead and clone this project here and just copy and paste them across onto your collection list wrapper. In addition to that, I also recommend you go ahead and copy the last viewed and the wish list section from the product page template as well. If you'd like to add more to your store, you can go ahead and use the documentation where we've got a list of attributes you can apply to your collection list wrapper, as well as some information about customizing the drop down menu. If you need help or support, we do have our help center where we quite happily help you with any technical support questions that you may have. Just submit a ticket there and we'll happily get in touch with you soon. We do have a Facebook community, which we are extremely active on there, and we do try our best to help people with design inspiration, top tips, and help with their projects as well. Anyway, my name has been Matt. I hope you got all the best from this video tutorial, and I will catch you guys in the next video.